Okay, well, popped into Broadway again this morning and uh, sat on the green and saw across the green this lovely old um, pub, uh, hotel, the Swan Hotel and Bar, and um, just like the um, um, the parasols put outside, so I did a drawing with a fine point um, permanent ink pen and then I'll put on some darker touches with the uh, very large bullet point pen. Um, now I'm going to now wash colour in just to get a little idea of uh, the sort of sort of set the scene for the whole thing. And it's done on um, um, cartridge paper, so it doesn't take a lot of watercolour. So I'm going to not wet any wet areas, I'm just going to go straight in and wash the colour on with a large um, number four mop. Starting off with the blue, I'm picking around the chimneys as I normally do and uh, working my way around. Um, and it is going to be treated very, very simply. Um, this sort of paper does take a wash of colour, um, but um, it's not, not like um, true watercolour paper, but it still has its own values. Used a lot with artists um, to sketch, and that's exactly what we're doing here. Periodist a sketch. Um, just going to go in a little deeper in a couple of places. Some coming from the right, so we're going to have a deeper blue there, over the top there, through to there, touch deeper at the top there, and just allow that to um, to run down really and dry off. Not worried about um, the the real. Um, uh, run backs or blooms that you get, uh, just mopping off a little along that bottom edge, I don't like to um, run back too much there, but overall we're just really washing colour on, allowing that to dry, that's good, and I'm uh, going to put some colour onto the road uh, and the path, now the road, the, the path I'm going to use light red and I'm using Naples yellow just to give it a bit of warmth, that's more or less a Cotswold sort of stone colour so that's the path gone in um, now I'm going to use a bit more light red with a bit of cadmium lemon um, and this is the wash I'm using for the Cotswold stone walling. Uh, so I'm going to go around there, over there, and try and treat it very loosely. Notice how quickly I'm painting. Not the, the edges are actually um, depicted by the drawing, to be honest with you. So there's no need at all to pick up edges. So that's that, and we'll do that chimney there. A little bit of running, but not worried about that. Pick into that creeper there. Oh, and this one here, that's also a Cotswold stone. See how quickly it comes up. Um, a little bit there. Oh, a little bit of Cotswold stone there and there. And a little bit under that window, or under those windows there. Some creepers that are going around the um, the wall, uh, creeping up the wall. So that's that. Now I'm going to paint the roof, and um, <coughs> I'm not so sure it was grey slate, um, but I'm actually going to use a Cotswold stone um, flag roof mix. So uh, for this, I'm using burnt umber light red, 
cadmium 11 and ultramarine blue and I'm going to go fairly strong with this because I want to give it a bit of depth of colour um, straight away. Don't want um, there we are. That's the sort of um, sort of aged Cotswold stone colour that you get. And I'm just going to paint the ridge tile across the top, and then we just run the colour through. You can paint down, or you can paint across. We can do a bit of both really um, with this it's actually cream. So we'll try and maintain the white around there. Painting around the dorm windows. Nice way of uh, painting a subject this. Uh, start off with a large brush. I wouldn't go in with a small brush straight away because that can cause some. Um, a little bit of a problem when it comes to um, getting clean washes you end up with lots of run backs. I added more blue to that one and a touch more blue to this one purely because I ran out of picture. We want most of the colour in where the um, main building is and, and that one is going to be or have more blue so it's a variety, variety of mixes there, variety of colour and <coughs> now I'm going to paint the roof which will be in shadow anyway that main roof that we can see there a little bit darker maybe put some shadow on that later and uh, this one there, just a small amount of patch of that roof we can see. There we go. So that's that. Clean the brush. Just get some other colour down. Just to get a base colour onto the um, um, to the painting. Now greys seem to be in at the moment. So let's pick up a grey for... So we can... I don't know if it's a greeny grey, but let's pick up this light grey for the um, parasols. Um, in keeping with the trends, I suppose, these days, greys seem to be in. We'll see how long that lasts, but there you go. So that's the grey in. Point them up quite nicely. Always nice to point them up nice and freely not uh, being too fussy with that or the same grey is being used for these things there's a bit too much uh, put a bit more, more blue in that just a just a grey blue there we go and that just just for these um, they're planters actually that's what those are there Allow that to dry off nicely, and as I say, it's a good thing to do. Um, good way of um, producing an impression of the um, of a scene. Putting in a little bit of yellowing, sorry, greening here, leaving one or two patches unpainted. for light, trying to get the light onto that <coughs> and tad more yellow in the mix for this one, sun coming from the right could be, this one runs up to the gutter could be the fact that it um, has a bit more sun on that side um, but the drawing does most of the work for you, to be honest with you. Which is a uh, pleasure when you come to paint this sort of subject. And 
next area will be the chimneys. Now they are brick, funny enough, so we're going to put them in red brick. We only need paint the sunlit side, because the shadow side is actually um, inked in. And a bit of Cotswold stone for this one there, there, like that. Because okay, that one is Cotswold stone, uh, a little bit darker, and that area there just needs filling in. Good, it's drying off very, very nicely. Um, so that's the first real washes that you need to put on when you start your subject. Okay, well we're pretty much uh, virtually there, really. You know, I'm. Um, pretty happy with that, it's just a matter of shadows and a nice shadow is cobalt blue and I need to mix up a fair amount of shadow cobalt blue with Indian red this seems funny but to me it makes a nice shadow good shadow for snow scenes actually pictures Luckily we're not got snow today. Um, and um, and it needs to be quite a purpley mix. A uh, bit of warmth to it, so a little bit of red. Sun's coming from the right, so we paint down and quite high up into the chimney, where it's casting a shadow onto the onto the um, roof. We've also got a shadow there and down the sunlit the shadow side. These shadows really are the key to any picture and you would see it would come across like that and down to that corner. Do the same here, just a thinner line on that and it comes across like that and down to that corner. At a point, there you go. And the shadow is already in here, but I'm going to enhance it a little by being a little bit deeper. This shows that there's plenty of overhang there, a little bit under there where the gutter line is. Um, yeah, that's come up into that and make that a bit thinner. Right, and then we're going to have a nice shadow running across. From the overhanging roof line. Here we go, and then down the left hand side of the left hand side of the downpipe for the gutter. I'm doing all the main building first, and uh, now this area here, which will be in shadow, so that's going in, it'll pick up that outside edge there and of course you'll have a slanting shadow to that corner for that roof that stands back you can leave the odd see that odd little bit of white there I mean, not a great lover of white in shadows but they do sometimes give a little bit of interest to the whole thing um, this will be in shadow I'm going to use the same colour. It's it is a painting, but it's a sketch really, which um, is quite um, quite nice. And this is all going to be in shadow, and that will set that back very nicely, because if we don't want that to interfere with the pub or the hotel itself, that will be in shadow as well. That's it. It's all very you know, you get your 3D effect, and that's what really makes any picture. It's that 3D or 2D effect. Um, don't want shadows to be too dark. Now I'm going to have some shadows on the overhanging. That'll probably be all in shadow there. And 
that will probably be all in shadow on the underside like that just gently teasing it down there we are and just where it hangs just coming up you see one or two little darker areas and of course there will be then some shadow on the wall from that as well Get under that seal and down the right hand side oh that window may be slightly recessed so that will take some shadow see the way it's all beginning to to look um, very um, uh, interesting and uh, now there will be shadow under this that will all be in shadow but it will run up at a bit of an angle I think so that's like that so you can see an entrance into that there would be a shadow there bit of greenery on that but I'm not, I haven't put that in not always necessary <coughs> then this is where things really start to get uh, interesting because of that door would be in shadow because it's open against the light that would then cast that into shadow there would be a shadow across the wall uh, and the window oh that would be shadowed as well ok so this is where you have to think where your shadows are going to come who's going to be in shadow and who isn't whether the brolly would cast a shadow probably would there bits of shadow there we are uh, that brolly would cast another shadow across there and just go on to that one and then this one would cast that figure into shadow underneath as well and then a little bit of shadow on the left hand side there and a little bit of shadow on the underneath of some of those oh and that would all be in shadow and that would cast a shadow onto you know it's, it's all about thinking where the shadows would cast There's a lovely film of light. You know, if things going on, people. Um, let's just put that bit of shadow there. Um, a little bit of extra depth of shadow there. That all helps to give that the look we require. And of course, this is overhanging like that. There is just a little bit of shadow there. This would then begin to gradually come into shadow and it just tapers as it goes around the corner. A bit of shadow here and there in that wall. Oh, and that wall would then cast a shadow. A um, bit of shadow on the left hand side of this planting there. And that, because if this is, um, let's just finish this off. Um, I've just got to remember that that's it, you can even use the point of that brush to create a secondary sort of leafy effect and then the shadow from that overhanging um, uh, or that creeper would actually cast across the wall like that and see the way you get that lovely effect of shadows on that wall good that's pretty much there oh and we would have a fairly narrow shadow running from the sign and that would then go up there somewhere get lost amongst everything um, and this gate there so that would be in shadow um, just really I always like my foreground shadow and I was casting it, I'm, I couldn't really tell you and I'm not really worried to be quite honest um, we have a shadow there and I'm going to have, could be a tree shadow just casting across there oh, just forgot that we need shadow underneath there remove some of the uh, there you go, just a bit of shadow there the outside edge 
And that pretty much um, doesn't really, you know, as a study, slip of overhang there. There are some touches that you could put in. I mean, there possibly a bit of shadow uh, across the top for the depth of the window and down the right hand side. Um, may may even be these, although I think they're probably flush. But it's always, I always think it looks quite good to do that. A bit of a seal, probably no seal on that, but let's put a little bit of darker colour in. And that really completes um, my line and wash of the um, Swan Hotel and Bar in Broadway. Uh, so I would suggest if you're looking to create um, quick sketches, then use the line and wash method. Um, seems to work and um, I will be posting more of these in the future.